Hey there folks and welcome back. In a previous post I had promised to talk about risk adjusted return. We had talked about beta, standard deviation, and R squared. And I had committed to telling you about how those will play into risk adjusted return measures. So I apologize, I am battling a chest cold, so bear with me. And we are gonna work pretty quickly here. So again, feel free to pause and restart as necessary. So we're going to talk about risk adjusted return. What is it? How to measure it and why it's important. Take a look here at this next slide. Um, risk is like having to work. You got to do it so you might as well get paid for it. You don't want to work for free. So taking on investment risk without being compensated for that, that's just like working a bad job. So keep in mind if you kind of visualize here for just a moment that you're going to go to a theme park or amusement park with a group of friends. You've got some friends that are more thrill seeker types, and then you've got other folks that are a little more squeamish, right? Well, what if there was a way to maximize your fun but minimize the squeamishness? In other words, if everybody's going to ride the same roller coaster, how are you going to please your thrill seeker friends? Make sure that they're having fun, but also make sure that it's not too crazy for those that aren't as as much of thrill seekers. So if you what if there were standardized numbers that you could use that would measure a roller coaster's fun against how much how much fear it would induce. In other words, it's a measurement of fun and fear all in one number. They could easily tell you, hey, look, this roller coaster would be fun, but not too scary. And vice versa, this other roller coaster might be a little more lame. This other one might be a little more uh, too too much uh, too much going on, too many loop to doops to make it fun. So that's kind, of like, me, that's kind of like the Sharpe ratio and the Trenner index. They are standardized numbers that we can use to compare investments with each other to give us a pretty good idea what the what the level of return and risk is going to look like or at least has looked like in historical numbers so we're going to talk about the sharp ratio and the trender index first off with the sharp what you'll need you're going to need three things you're going to need the arithmetic mean or arithmetic mean that's just the average performance of your portfolio so let's say you've got a mutual fund or a fund inside your 401k well, you're going to need the average return on that. Then the next thing you're going to need is the average yield for the risk-free asset. Now, again, we talked in a previous blog post how there's no such thing as a risk-free asset, but we can use some proxies. Normally, we're looking at short-term U.S. Treasuries, at least here in the United States. So one proxy could be the 90-day Treasury, Treasury note or Treasury bill. And I put a link here so you can look that up. And the third thing that you're going to need is the standard deviation of your portfolio or investment. And a lot of times that's going to be found in the statement of additional information, the prospectus, or sometimes even your statement. But you might have to dig around a little bit. That's going to be the hardest thing to find. So once you get all those three ingredients, those three figures, jot them down. Those are the only three things we're going to need. That. What we're going to do is we're going to take the, the return of the portfolio, subtract the return of the risk-free asset and then divide all that by the standard deviation so the equation here pretty straightforward so again portfolio minus the risk-free divided by the standard deviation of the portfolio two specific examples so let's say the return on our portfolio averaged 5.9 percent for the period that we're measuring and let's say the risk-free return the 90-day treasury bill average return was 0 0.07 and the standard deviation of our portfolio was 8.6 percent well we plug all those numbers here obviously you can see the math there that gives us a sharp ratio of 0.68 so that tells us we did a pretty good job an okay job at least of getting paid for the risk that we were assuming as measured by standard deviation so let's look at portfolio or example two our return was 7.2 percent the treasury was paying 0.09% and our standard deviation was 26.2%. So again, that's quite a bit of volatility there, 26.2. So you can kind of already think in your head, 
hey look that's quite a big standard deviation the return from portfolio one to portfolio two if we're kind of comparing them isn't that big of a difference as compared to the standard deviation so you can already kind of start thinking hey look my sharp ratio might not be quite as high and that's exactly what we get we get 0.27 um, so portfolio two although it had a higher return look at the returns again so if you're looking at just returns you say well portfolio two did better but on a risk return risk adjusted return basis you can say we actually did worse so that's kind of again we're, we're going pretty quickly here feel free to pause and come back on to the sharp so what so you can use this to compare one sharp ratio to another higher sharp is generally better in other words when we get that number higher the better and then really the key takeaway is the returns don't mean much unless you're adjusting for risk so standard deviation again that's measuring the total risk um, systematic risk as well as the individual risk the other risk that goes along with the individual investment so moving on to the trainer index so fairly similar to our sharp ratio we're going to need the same first two ingredients we're going to need the return of the portfolio we're going to need the risk-free return same thing as before but instead of the standard deviation we're going to need the beta and again we kind of covered beta in a previous blog post but those are our three ingredients very similar equation we're gonna take the return of the portfolio subtract the risk return rate or the risk free rate divide that by our beta and you can see the equation there. here example one the return on our portfolio was 5.9 percent risk free return there our treasury was 0 0.07 and our beta was 0.7 so if you need a refresher on beta, you can see our previous blog post. I'll link that here in the notes. So if we throw that in the math there, it gives us a, a trainer index of 7.43%. Now, that doesn't tell us a whole lot until we compare it to another investment. Typically, what we're going to do is compare that to the market, trainer index for the market, to see if we're beating the market or if we're underperforming. So in this case, let's look at the return of our portfolio. Let's say we've got the S&P 500. Now normally that little P, in practice you'll normally see that as a little M if we're going to use the market. But just bear with me on this one. So let's say our S&P 500 returned 9.3%, our treasury was 0 0.09, and the beta for the market, well that's going to be 1, right? Because the beta, again, it's a comparative measure, so that's normally, it's basically going to get us to be always 1 if you're doing the beta of standard as poor as 500. So we plug that in, we get a trainer index of 9.21. Well, what that tells us is that our risk adjusted measure that our portfolio one underperformed the market in general. Now, if we had got a trainer index higher in example one than in example two, well, then that would just tell us that we had actually outperformed the market on a risk adjusted measure. So trainer versus sharp, which one's better? Well, it really kind of depends on how much correlation there is between your investment and the market in general. So that goes back to R squared. R squared really just is, it tells us how much information is contained in the statistical regression. In other words, that's going to tell us how good our beta is. So generally speaking, if we've got a, an R squared approaching one, that means that a lot of information is contained in the regression model therefore our coefficients are going to be fairly predictive in other words our beta is going to be a good indicator something that we can rely on so the farther the lower our r squared gets the closer it gets to zero then the 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 worse off beta is going to be in other words it's not going to tell us a whole lot with relation to beta so in general terms kind of a rule of thumb or guidepost 0.7 if our r squared is 0.7 or more beta is going to be a useful example and we'd want to use our trainer index likewise if our r squared is less than 0.7 beta is not as predictive and our sharp ratio is going to be a better figure so what's the point so we can use this to analyze our returns on our investments 401ks mutual funds things like that in other words just because we got a 14.8 percent return doesn't really mean a whole lot 
unless we're getting paid for the risk. So if an adjust risk adjusted return, that 14 point whatever percent is if the sharp or trainer indexes are telling us that they're not actually that good, then 14 point whatever is not that good of a return. So you're assuming risk, you got to be compensated for it. So that's really the whole point. So how to apply this? The next time you get your investment statement, whether it's 401k, a mutual fund, or even your stock, dig a little bit deeper. See if you can calculate your risk adjusted return using either the trainer or the sharp. And see if you can kind of get a feel for, you know, are you getting compensated for the risk that you're taking on with your investments? And at the very least, now you know that return is only one number in the puzzle piece or one puzzle piece in the puzzle of your your overall total returns you got to take into account risk when factoring return so hope this has been helpful for you now you're empowered to hopefully make better investment decisions and let me know what questions or concerns you may have about this and I'm gonna post a quiz here as well to help test your knowledge and continue your learning thanks for joining us